This is Stefan Speckers from pinvendors.com and today we're looking at a pin costs. So what does a pin cost? And we'll use our short white paper written by me to walk us through a few topics. We'll quickly dive into what is PIM as an introduction. We'll look at PIM cost drivers. Um, plus we'll look at examples. We'll look at the PIM business case and we'll look at the PIM vendors that come free tools to wrap up. But first, a quick introduction. What is PIM? What, how do we define PIM? PIM, or Product Information Management, is the process and the tooling that we use to make the process of product information management as smooth and efficient as possible. You take information from different input sources, you enrich those in your PIM, your product information management tool, and then you publish those to your internal and external channels. The PIM process consists of four steps or four units. You have the onboarding from both internal and external sources. Um, product data comes from data pools, from your suppliers, from your ERP. You enrich those attributes, uh, those products with additional attributes. You add attributes, you add images, you add 3D models, explainer videos. Then you publish those products to both internal and external platforms. So it could be to your internal e-commerce shop. Um, well, at least it's an internal tooling. Obviously the shop is uh, scratched out. Um, and then you publish it to internal and external platforms. So those could be your internal channels, such as your e-commerce store, an app, uh, a printed catalog, or it could be external platforms like Amazon, your supplier, your customer portals, etc. And then on top of that sits the workflow management, which is a set of tools and dashboards designed to help you manage the process of onboarding, enrichment and publication as smoothly as possible. It could be dashboards with triggers to warn you of bottlenecks. Um, but it's also helpful to have, for example, custom roles that have different rights so that your copywriter or translator is not able to delete the images from your product. Okay, centered in this whole thing is the product data model. Um, the product data model is basically your product information management structure, your product data structure. And it's a multi-layered data entity. Um, that means that it has a core, the master data. Um, those are the most boring details of your product, but also maybe the most important ones. So your barcodes or product numbers, your EAN, dimensions, weights, etc. Around that core, there's a layer of rich product data. So that could be images, commercial descriptions, copywriting, SEO descriptions, etc. And then outside of that is an outer layer of product data model of product information. And that outer layer of product information consists of pricing and other commercial information. It could be customer interactions, customer reviews that they upload through your e-commerce platform, and it could consist of relationships. So it could be upsell spare parts to other products, sets, etc. How does PIM fit into your IT architecture in your IT landscape? We have different input sources, as we said, those could be your ERP, your enterprise resource planning tooling. It could be your product lifecycle management tooling, could be other sources. You take those into your product systems. And we define product systems as your master data management tool, your MDM tool, your data asset management tool, DAM, or your product information management tool. And then you publish those to your internal and external channels. So you take the onboarding and enrichment, which we have in this chart um, put under the, the MDM section, but it could also be managed in your PIM. And then that goes to your output where you publish it to your internal and external channels. And then everywhere there's an interaction with your DAM to get the correct images and store the correct images for each step. And of course, on top of that sit the control or workflows. Okay. But now what does a PIM cost? 
we'll look at cost drivers, we'll look at benefits, and we'll look at the business case of product information management tools. There are three main cost drivers for product information management costs, and those are complexity, which we'll dive in deeper because we identify product complexity and organizational complexity, quantity and organizational readiness, and we'll cover each of those in turn. So starting with the first one, product complexity. Having more complex products, for example, because you have complicated attributes, complicated structures or complicated relationships really drives up the costs of a PIM. You need a more complicated or more capable PIM to manage all that product complexity. That usually drives up the cost, even if it's not purely the PIM tooling itself, the additional cost will be in the implementation or configuration of your product information management tooling. So the implementation costs and maybe even the management costs will increase. A second driver of complexity is organizational complexity. So if your organization is more complicated because there's a rigid process, maybe driven by very rigid tooling. You have many input sources because you're a retailer that has tens, maybe hundreds of different suppliers. You have many output channels because you're a brand and you publish to hundreds of customers, different data pools, different channels. Maybe you have multiple business units in different countries, or maybe there's industry demands that make your organization specifically complex. So you have some legal obligations, such as any drug and pharmaceutical industry that define the complex, that define the complexity of your product data. As we say, quantity has a quality of its own. Um, and if you have more products and you want to manage more products in your PIM, you will have an increased complexity to manage because of the increased product relationships, because of there's more maintenance, because you need to have more bandwidth and storage, and the probably because you have more people involved in the product information management process. All those will impact the costs associated with your product information management tooling and implementation. And then finally, the organizational readiness. Often overlooked, um, because probably you are ready for a new PIM, otherwise you might not be watching this video, but is your organization ready for the next expedition? So are your people, your processes and your IT architecture ready to implement a PIM or implement a new product information management tool? So we'll look at some examples. We have entry-level PIMs, small to medium enterprise PIMs and true enterprise PIMs. And we have an example calculation of the total cost of ownership for these three sizes. An entry-level PIM has basic PIM functionality. A mid-market PIM for small to medium enterprise has one or two more key features that they that increase the complexity. And an enterprise PIM has enterprise features such as single sign-on, um, data quality, integration into different enterprise toolings such as ERP or Salesforce, etc. And you're, you can see on the right hand side is that both the startup and the yearly costs increase. So your year one costs are obviously always higher because it includes the implementation and design costs of a PIM. And then you have the following on years that basically cover maintenance cost and obviously licensing fees for your PIM. And what you will see is entry-level PIMs can be implemented for, let's say, 30 to 50K euro in the first year with 10, 15K euros in the following years. Mid-market PIMs rise up um, in costs dramatically, um, up to three times or five times the cost um, with the first year costs around 150k and subsequent years for well, let's say 60 to 100k a year and then the enterprise costs at least the costs for enterprise PIM are up to half a million in implementation and licensing costs for the first year and 
200 to 400,000 euros a year for maintenance and the licensing of the PIM. All these numbers are indications. Um, they could vary. You could be a very small startup that has a very complicated setup. So you need a more complicated PIM and actually you need a mid-market PIM. Um, you could be a huge global corporation that is actually very well served with a mid-market PIM. And that is exactly why our solution as PIMVendors.com exists to help you select the right PIM for you and for your requirements. Before we go to that, let's check the PIM business case. Does it make sense to implement a PIM when you compare the cost to the benefits of a product information management tool and where are those benefits coming from? A PIM has direct benefits. It brings direct benefits. So it helps you in two ways. You have more efficiency in each step of the PIM process. So we have the three steps and the workflow here on the right. Um, with lower costs because of automation in different steps. You have fewer errors because you have um, data validation rules, for example, and you can identify bottlenecks to solve the, the issues that arise through the whole process and dedicate resources to remove those bottlenecks and identify them immediately instead of after the season has basically ended. Another direct benefit is an increase in sales because you have a quicker time to market, less time is spent on onboarding, enriching and publishing products. Um, you are able to sell them quicker. You will have a consistent brand experience across channels. So you will have the same product in information on every step of the customer journey, which increases their trust, which increases sales and conversion because they don't see like three different images of your product on three different channels, it's all the same image. And of course, because you can spend more time on enriching a product, you'll have a better and richer purchasing experience as a customer, which will increase the conversion as well. Then there is a long list of indirect benefits. A PIM offers benefits such as a streamlined process for suppliers and customers to a supply for the suppliers and receive for customers their product information. You'll have easier internationalization and translation. Adding sales channels is smooth. You don't need to create a new Excel transformation sheet, but you can just map your existing product data to a new channel. You'll have one source of truth for product information and everyone knows where to find it. So you won't have 10 different versions of your product information hovering around your networks that sometimes they use one version, sometimes they use the other version. You'll have a change log of a backup or a backup of product information and, if, and all kinds of changes. So if someone screws up, you can revert back to a previous version. Changes are automatically published um, or published after review. Um, but in any case, you can make sure that every channel is up to date. So as soon as you hit publish, it updates your own product information on your own channels and also on your external channels, such as an Amazon or external marketplaces. You don't have to wait for them to update their product information based on your input. And there's no messing around with sending them an Excel with or PDF with product information updates, and then just hoping that they will update their product information on their site. There's direct integrations into different publishing tools, for example, your print publishing tool. And obviously there's clear roles and rights for all the users, both internal and external, involved in the product information management process. So no one can mess up things that they're not allowed to mess up. So how does this work then for the business case? What we see is that there's usually a 50% higher efficiency in the whole product enrichment step. So what you see is the middle step in the product information management process because they have more information available, because there's automation, because there's less errors, um, or they are able to have a more efficient enrichment process. And that increases when there is a complex data model. 
For example, you have many languages or you have complex relationships. We also see 5 to 15% higher conversion rates on your own or external channels. And then you need to offset those direct benefits with the costs. So you have design, implementation, and license fees to account. And we checked in on those costs earlier when we compared the small to medium enterprise, entry level, and enterprise PIMs. And you can get a quick estimation using our free tooling to get an, a good grip of your situation and how the design, implementation, and license fees stack up for your use case. which is a great bridge to our PIM vendors.com free tools. You can use our free tools to guide your PIM selection process. Our main tooling is the full scan. We have a independent algorithm that helps you determine your PIM profile. And we match that PIM profile based on your requirements with our vendor database. As soon as you've filled in the the full scan will reach out to you to schedule a consultation with our PIM expert. That gives us qualitative additional input to give you the best independent shortlist for your needs. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes, so grab a coffee and follow the link below. If you're in a rush and you want to receive a shortlist with three PIM systems in less than five minutes, we have a quick scan for less complicated businesses or quick answers if you just need a, a quick shortlist. It's a dynamic quick scan. So you, depending on the answers, you get a, a shorter or longer or more complicated version. And it takes only five, five minutes to answer all the questions. Again, an independent algorithm shortlist delivers the, the results straight to your inbox and you'll get a tailored shortlist with up to three fitting PIM systems. You can follow the link below um, or just click the button to go to the quick scan as well. Our main tool, or at least the most popular tool that we have, and we mentioned it already, is the cost calculator. So you can get a free estimation of your PIM costs from design to implementation within, practically within minutes. And you get the estimation, not just on the first year, which will have the highest costs, but also over the following year. So you can get a, a total cost of ownership for a PIM tool that fits your requirements or fits your business. It's a rough estimation, but still, it's a good indication of levels of cost in your case. You can follow the link or again, click the button. But who is PimFenders.com? I already introduced myself as the co-founder of PimFenders.com, but what do we do and who are we? Well, we help you select the PIM that is tailored to your unique requirements. How do we do that? We do that by brokering the relationship between vendors and integrators and users of PIM, such as retailers, wholesalers, and manufacturers. We do that because there's over 200 PIM systems active and finding the right PIM for you and finding the right integration partner that fits your industry, that fits your use case is quite complicated. And we understand your challenges and we understand the PIM market. We have a huge list of customers in retail, in wholesale, in manufacturing. And we have a list of over 40 partners that we work with from small entry-level PIMs to the real enterprise PIMs, from open source PIMs to closed source PIMs, from e-commerce focused PIMs to more production manufacturing focused PIMs. We all have them covered. All right, so next steps. If you're ready to embark on your PIM journey, you can explore the free articles that we have on pimfenders.com. Um, you can check the recordings of one of our events. We do roundtables on PIM related topics, and we also have lightning demos where our vendors pitch their tooling for a specific market or for a specific solution. Um, so you can basically get a very short introduction into their tooling without having to sit through a full morning of demos with them and get stalked by them for the coming three months. Um, you can fill in our full scan to get your tailored shortlist, or you can schedule a free call with Chris, my colleague, to discuss your PIM questions. Um, while you're at it, you can also check us on LinkedIn and you can stay up to date on all the PIM-related news. We 
publish information daily. Um, and obviously we also publish our events there, our new roundtables and new lightning demos. If you have any questions, reach out to us. You can find Chris on chris.jobs at pimfenders.com and you can find myself at stayfrompinsbaggers at pimfenders.com and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you.